All right, so I'm a part of this page <laughs> called Black Millennial Single and Degree. Okay, have you heard of this page? No, but it's interesting. Go ahead. Okay, it is a hot ass mess. <laughs> okay, there are almost 16,000 people on there that identify with these characteristics. But every, every day, there are posts where it's like, Men against women. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. You might have an interesting take on this because you're not as familiar with Kevin Samuel's content. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't watch any of it. But from a... I mean, you've got social media. You're, 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 you don't live under a rock. Why do you think Kevin Samuels has become so successful? Ooh. <laughs> um. I think a lot of men like to identify with what he has said or is saying because they feel like they're always getting bashed by the women in the media. So for a man to come on here and say things that probably a lot of women don't agree with, but how men have been feeling, um, I think it gave them an opportunity to really you know, connect to that because you always see, you know, on there, you know, you go on Twitter, a woman does something to a man. Well, if this was a black man in this situation, then, you know, they would have buried him under the prison or this would have happened. Um, so I think that when Kevin Samuels came and he's entertaining, like, you know, like he'll cuss you out and, and hang up on you and tell you to get off his life. So although he says some interesting things, it's also entertainment. It's like reality TV. So I think that to for men, they don't really watch much reality TV. But so for this reality TV they are able to relate to, they're like, oh, like this is this is interesting for me. Um I don't watch him though, because the clips that I've seen, it's um it's a lot for me to handle. And I'm not a big reality TV person, so it's not really appealing to me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so um Zoom out a little bit and talk to me about what you think his popularity or his newfound success says about us as a culture. Um, I think it kind of shows like kind of what this show is about, like how large the divide is between black men and black women. And I also think Sometimes we group ourselves in these boxes and they think that all women feel this way or all men feel that way. And that's not the case across the board. Um, so it's like, he, I hear one thing that he says all the time. It's like, well, you know, 90% of women are chasing after this one type of man, this man, that this black man that makes six figures and this, this man that does this and does that. Well, not every woman wants that type of man. Like, you know, sometimes women just want a nice man that's going to take care of them. He don't have to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. He could be a plumber. But if he's a nice man and he takes care of his family, then it's like, I'm OK with that. But I think his appeal to us is that he's putting all of us in a he's putting a lot of us in a box. And so when you either agree, you either agree wholeheartedly or you like strongly disagree with him. But either way, you're engaging the audience because people want to hear what you have to say on depending on what side of the coin you're on. So it's like, I think, you know, it's the same reason why sometimes we watch sports, even though it might be the team that you hate playing, you're still watching it because you want to see them get beat. So it's like, I feel with Kevin Samuels, that's kind of the thing. Like he's he because of his the way that he entertains he pulls from the people who love him and from the people who hate him so it's like it's kind of across the board he appeals to a lot of people so okay um thought experiment 
Okay. <laughs> or exercise. I don't know what the correct term is. Why would you as a black man, that's a thought experiment, resonate with what he's saying? If I were a black man, why would I resonate with what he's saying? Um, because... All right, so I'm a part of this page <laughs> called Black Millennial Single and Degreed. Okay, have you heard of this page? No, but it's interesting. Go ahead. Okay, it is a hot ass mess. <laughs> okay, there are almost 16,000 people on there that identify with these characteristics. But every, every day, there are posts where it's like, men against women or women against men and a lot of the times the men on the page get upset because they feel like women are able to come on the page and say I ain't dating no broke niggas I ain't dating no short niggas I ain't dating the niggas with kids but if a man comes on the page and he's like I like my women skinny and they'd be like, oh, you're body shaving. <laughs> like, you're fat phobic. You hate women. So I think um, as a black man, to see someone like Kevin Samuels, who is successful, um, go on and speak and say some of these things that, you know, sometimes men might feel, but they shy away from saying because they feel like they're going to get bashed. It's, you know, it's like, whew, it's a sigh of relief because now I'm identifying with someone who is in a pretty solid status that feels the same way I feel. So maybe as a black man, like that's appealing to me. And like, I'm, I kind of feel a sigh of relief. Like it's a connection that I have there. If I feel these, if I feel this way. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I see. So in, in that group, um, <laughs> if, if, if you, if you had to guess or estimate, um, <clears throat> what percentage of the group is male and what percentage is female? Way more females than males. Um, I would say... Like 80-20? Or like 90-10? No, maybe... Maybe 70-30. 70-30 women. But even 80-20, like, I wouldn't be surprised. But on the page as well, you have a lot more women that are actively seeking and, like, trying to go out there and put themselves, putting their best foot forward to be in a relationship and be with these men than the men are the women. And for the men on the page, they're a lot more... It's the same men that you see all the time. They just like to be on there and talking and stuff like that. It's like for women, you might see a different woman pop up on there every day. But as far as engagements and the comments and stuff like that, it's the same men all the time, at least from what I see. Okay. So let, let, let's unpack that a little bit. <laughs> let's unpack that. Um, I think a good place to start is, are you familiar with the term hypergamy? Hypergamy? No. Okay, so the simple definition is hypergamy is wanting to go after your best option. Okay. So a lot of men say that women are naturally hypergamous. I tend to believe that. So, and that's why you get sometimes women are so <clears throat> bold with their preferences, right? My man... So you'll have women who make $50,000 a year and her man needs to make at least <laughs> double yeah. that, right? Yeah. So it's not even like 50000 is below me. Yeah. You know, or a woman who's 5'5", five, five, her man needs to be at least 6'1", <laughs> one, right? Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on hypergamy and how do you think it is playing to the male-female dynamic in the black community and the 80-20 or 70-30 split that you're talking about in the group? One thing that um, I may disagree with as people saying that a lot of women are, you know, engaged in hypergamy. When you get older, as a black woman, and I've discussed this with my friends on the way up here, they say that your value decreases. Okay. So as you get older and I'm kind of hit, I'm about to hit that age. I'm about to be 27 next week. I'm about to hit that age where they're like, okay. 
I'm, you know, my value is decreasing because I'm not young anymore. Uh, I'm not considered a, a young woman anymore, a young adult. Um, I think that black women, that may not be so true. Like, because I think that as you get older and your maternal instincts start to kick in and as you kind of just being like, all right, um, I may loosen up my standards a little bit. I don't want to say settle. I hate the word settle, but I may compromise on some of the things that um, I was looking for when I was younger for the sake of me being in a relationship. So I may not always go after my best option, but I'm gonna go after with an option that is comfortable and that's going to maybe do right by me, even though he may not be the most attractive man, he may not make the most money, he may not drive the best car, he may not compare to what my exes were, but right now he's good enough for what I'm looking for in life. Um, it sounds like settling. No, <laughs> I don't want to say settling. I hate, I hate that word. I hate the word settle because I feel like when you settle, eventually you'll be unhappy. You may not see it now. You could be unhappy right now, but because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do, you're like, all right, I'm here. But you're battling with yourself all the time as, okay, even though he's a good man, am I really happy? Like, no. Well, the, the question a lot of men tend to have is why do younger again we're talking about black people mm -hmm. why do younger black women tend to prioritize um the wrong things and not just things that are wrong but also things that are unsustainable like swag or charisma or 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 uh you know the the archetype that a lot of women tend to like is the educated thug <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But an educated thug isn't going to ride Very rare. Very into rare. Yeah. retirement with you, right? Yeah. So why do women tend to prioritize the wrong things initially and then hit their decline and then <laughs> want to prioritize the people that they essentially shitted on back in the day? See, okay, you talked about this in one of your other episodes. I don't 100% agree with that. Um, but I do see it. I do see it, though. Um, I think... What we see in, okay, we grew up, we're a social media age, all right? So kind of like what we see in the media shapes a lot of our foundations. And some of the movies that we grew up watching and the things that we see on TV and in the magazines and stuff, you kind of, it's kind of like glorified. Just how they say like the black male, you know, we could teach our sons to be more than athletes. I mean, be more than athletes and they can be lawyers and engineers. They can be teachers, you know, they could be plumbers, they could be mechanics. But what's glorified? Rappers and athletes. Um, I think it's the same thing um, that we see and that we kind of grow up with as women, especially um, for those of us who don't grow up. And just because you live in a two parent household doesn't mean that's the best situation for you. But those of us who grow up, in a stable um, and you know happy two parent household, I think so we may view dating and who we're attracted to a little differently than people who didn't grow up in the same situation. So with women, I think as we mature, that whole educated hood nigga like. I want to be with a drug dealer because he lives a fast life. Okay, now I'm 27. That's just not fun anymore. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to duck every time we drive past, you know, Crenshaw Ave. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to have to. That stuff's not exciting to me anymore. So now that I've matured and I realize this is not really what I want in my life, I'm looking for different things. Um, so maybe the woman that I was when I was younger, the guy that I wasn't attracted to then, I may be attracted to now because I'm mature, but that doesn't mean like I was trying to shit on you back then. That just means like my views have changed. We evolve as people. So, so are my views.